Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Sit Rep. I'm Army veteran Mike McNamara. And I am Marine Corps veteran Paul Corbett. And today's topic is actually something kind of fun, something that I found something on different. the internet. Yeah. yeah, something different. I was cruising around the old interwebs, as some people call it, uh, and I stumbled upon some research that was put together by a law firm. I believe they're out of Florida. Their information and a link to what we're talking about will be in the video description below. Um, but Will and Ponton had put together the study with regard to the difference in pay between civilians and veterans. So who makes more money across the board, every state? They looked at all the data. Um, and one of the things that I found that was really, really interesting uh, is that veterans, by and large, make more money than their civilian counterparts. And it's not just a little money, but a lot of money in some instances. So veterans in their 20s, on average, make about $4,000 more a year than their civilian counterparts. Let me, let me jump in real quick if I can interrupt you. Now, when you talk about that, is that just, that's not like, I'm a school teacher, I'm a veteran, you're a school teacher, you're not, so I make four grand more than you. It's just as a 20-year-old veteran, whatever job I'm doing, um, it's, I'm making about $4,000 more. Is that is that how the comparison goes? Well, they, they break it down in a bunch of different ways. Okay. Um, one of the things they look at is just the, as a conglomerate, the eight different age groups, okay. but then they also actually compare apples with apples. So right. civilian doctors with doctors who are veterans, um, which that's also another interesting thing, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, but as I was saying, on average, uh, veterans who are in their 20s make $4,000 more a year. Veterans in their 30s make $5,000 more a year. Veterans in their 40s make $11,000 more a year. Veterans in their 50s make $13,000 more a year. And veterans in their 60s or older make about $3,000 more a year than their civilian counterparts. That's fa that, that, is, that is fascinating. And, and you, know, you sit here and think, and, and you're just talking veterans. You're not talking about, you know, okay, I was an officer in the Navy and I was a nuclear engineer, so now I'm out in the civilian world. You're talking about soup to nuts, all job descriptions, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, Space Force now. If, you know, enlisted officer, warrant officer, it, if you're a veteran coming out with that military training and military background, um, whether it be for leadership as well as some really specialty, as you get into some of the specialty jobs you can do in the military, then you're going to make, on average, depending on your age, more money than somebody who never served. Yeah, and I mean, it's, and we were actually, I mean, this is kind of a, a different topic we were discussing before you ever even got on camera. Uh, but we were we were discussing the fact that a lot of what I think are smart people, <laughs> uh, if they, especially if they want to go into a trade, they go in the military and learn the trade through the military. And uh, there are some trades and others are being worked on by Congress and, and other right. legislative bodies. But, you know, you can come out with not only different clearances to be able to work different types of contracts with the government or different organizations that get government contracts. But you could also have across the board every credential you could possibly need as a welder or as a mechanic or... I, you and I have spoken um, and you've met the individual, but we have a family friend who went into the the army for communications and then as he progressed up, uh, got more into the computer side of the house and the IT stuff, uh, and then became a subject matter expert. Well, the Army made him a subject matter expert on the whole COOP plan, which is basically, you know, if this is your headquarters here, whether it even be civilian or whatever, and a hurricane knocks it out, okay, now we move to this location and we can continue to conduct business on the same scale. Uh, he became uh, post 9-11, certified across the board, just like you're saying. Every certification you could have for computer science, you know, through Microsoft or Apple or what have you, you know, the army sent him to those schools. So now he is extremely marketable and a lot of people are after him because of the experience, the leadership ability, but more importantly, as you said earlier, all the certifications that they don't have to pay for. He's already got them in his hip pocket. Yeah, that's another thing you don't have to pay for. <laughs> and right. And he's and he's already been doing this 
for the United States government, for the United States military. And so especially in those type of job situations, a lot of that crosses over very nicely uh, into the civilian sector. Most definitely. Um, for people that are interested, Hill and Ponton also looked at this. Which states? Which states? Which states? Interesting. On average, veterans make the most money. Uh, and at the top of this kind of actually surprised me. Uh, but at the top of the list is Washington, D.C. On average, a uh, veteran makes $103,000 a year. Number two is Connecticut with $101,000 a year. New Jersey is number three with an average of $98,000 a year. Number four, Massachusetts with an average salary of $92,000. And Michigan's the last one or in the top five, the last of the top five at $83,000 a year. But the really interesting thing about Michigan just blew my mind. Because it's an outlier. It's Midwest. Every other state or, or territory you talked about is predominantly Northeast. Yeah, pretty much. Except for Michigan, which is Midwest, but, obviously. But, but the thing about Michigan is that on average, veterans in the state of Michigan make nearly 65% more than civilians do. I don't know why. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. It's, and that's something that I'm going to spend more time investigating and looking into just for my own curiosity. It's like that's a big number. Okay, so I hear what you're saying, and I mean, the unfortunate thing about that, though, in a way, is what you just read is uh, you better like winter in those <laughs> top five states. Um, okay, what states? shouldn't I live in? You know, what what are the worst states for veterans versus civilian salaries? If well, there is such a thing. Well, you've got an interesting spin on this and I'll let you share it. But Hill and Pond did look at this as well. And the five states that have the lowest salaries of any of our states are Arkansas, West Virginia, Wyoming, Vermont, and South Carolina. Um, interestingly, the only state in the entire country uh, where civilians actually make more than veterans do is the state of Kentucky. They make just under 4% more than your average veteran does. So what's interesting to me is those states are spread out all over the country. I mean, so you go from yeah. Vermont, you know, up in the Northeast, you know, down to Arkansas, out to Wyoming. Um, but I think as you think about it, maybe except for South Carolina, but they're all more rural states, if you see what I'm saying, yeah. Vermont, Wyoming, yeah. even Arkansas. I mean, then you know where the highest ones are much more. You're, you're talking, you know, Massachusetts, Connecticut. You know, very dense populations. You know, much more so than an Arkansas or especially a Wyoming. I imagine too. I mean, in some of the places like D.C., Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Jersey. Imagine the career fields there are far more competitive. There's a lot more education. There's a lot. Of, I mean, I don't really want to speculate. Right. I I don't know. I know VA benefits. That's what I know. Right. But, um, but it's just interesting stuff. Yeah, I, and, and I think what's, you know, I, I didn't realize, I guess I should have, but, you know, on average, there's over 200,000 veterans per year leaving the service and now obviously going out into some form or fashion of the civilian workforce. So, you know, it's this is something to consider. This is another uh, benefit, if you will, to consider as a veteran, um, and it ranks right up there with like you know what states don't have income tax or what states don't tax, um, you know, retirement or you know that kind of you know your retirement benefits. So this is this is always something to consider. But I I think what what I found, and maybe I just didn't read closely enough. This to me was a very black and white study. And it didn't take into account some other factors. And, and what do I mean by that? Okay, so you said Washington, D.C. was the best place to move to, to, you know, get a good salary as a veteran. Or not higher income, yeah. Where if I went to Arkansas. On average. <laughs> on average, right. On average, Arkansas is the worst state to move to as a veteran other than Kentucky, um, which, you know, was obviously the only negative state. Uh, but I think what doesn't take into account here, though, is Arkansas has a cost of living 44% lower than Washington, D.C. So if you're going to, and, and you work down there, you lived in D.C. So if you're going to live in the D.C. area, yeah, you better be making a darn good salary. 
Yeah, or like a lot of people because you're going to be living with a lot of people. Right. Um, <laughs> or you're going to be having a long commute every day coming yeah. out of Maryland or Virginia or Pennsylvania. Very long commute. Where, you know, obviously you may be making less in Arkansas, but the cost of living is substantially, you know, it's almost, you know, 44% is a significant number. So, you know, life is not going to cost you as much in Arkansas as it does in in DC or Boston or Hartford, you know, or, you know, these other in New Jersey, around New York City, that you know, other places that, you know, were mentioned in the study. No, it's, I mean, for me, the, there's a lot of different things that people could assume or speculate or, or draw from this, uh, from this study. But it, I, I just found it really interesting the fact that, I mean, for the most part, no matter what age somebody is, doesn't really matter what career field they're in. For the most part, you make more money as having formerly served in the military. Um, and I think that's something important. I mean, if especially if I'm a, a young adult that's out there and I'm like, oh, I don't really know what I want to do. Do I go to college? Do I go to trade school? Do I want to do this, do that? Military is a good option, you know, uh, go in, get good training. Pick something that you actually want to use when you get out. If right. if you have no desire to stay in the military for twenty years, right, then pick something you can use. Don't go in there and try and become like a high speed sec secret squirrel or something. You know, go in and and do something that you can use. You get a trade or a skill set that you can use out in the private sector, and not only do you come out with you know a trade that you can use, but you're going to grow up a bit. And now you also have benefits that you can use to advance your education, maybe get a master's degree or That's something exactly like that. what I was going to jump on was right. I mean, now, even if you've done, even if you did three or four year hitch, you know, now you've got the GI Bill. Or if you did it in the reserves of the Guard, um, now you, you have state education benefits as a Guard member. A lot of states offer um, free tuition at state schools to National Guard members. So you're right. Not only are you learning a trade um, and learn and having the military pay for you to be certified in that trade, but you're also accumulating the ability to further your civilian education um, when you get out. Uh, and you're right. But the combination of the two um, can carry you an awful long way uh, in setting you apart from the Help me out here. What is it? Something like a hundred thousand college graduates a year are dumped into the workforce and are looking for, you know, looking for jobs. Well, I'd imagine it's a higher number than that. Yeah, I, I, I forget. It is an it is a big number. I just forget off the top of my head. But that's your competition. Um, and then obviously, now you even have people who've been laid off because of the pandemic or what have you. And so what you know, this is another way for you to market yourself. Uh, and to have real marketable, um, you know, tools in your tool bag, if you will, you know, certifications, training, leadership training, you know, uh, you and I talk about this all the time. I mean, you d you don't get the level of leadership training in the civilian world that the military does for you, whether no. you're a junior officer or a junior non-commissioned officer or a young warrant officer. I mean, it's school after school after leadership school, followed by real world leadership experience that as you grow in your career, you're constantly being tuned to be a leader at that next level. You just don't get that in the civilian sector. No, that's one of the things you and I went through yellow belt training together. Right. And we're both sitting there like, uh, we already, this is kind of common sense in the military I did, this in my, I did this in my early 20s as a you know cadet or a, you know boot beat boot camp or whatever yeah uh so to all you folks out there uh really really interesting article uh, if you'd like to check it out hill and ponton's web link is below in the description uh thanks to them for putting that information together really really good stuff uh as a reminder always you can search hashtag the sit rep whether on youtube or any of your internet browsers we will pop right up uh hashtag the sit rep anywhere you have questions we have answers the sit rep is your trusted source for veterans benefits information with expert analysis and interviews with leaders from the field to find past shows, podcasts, and other content, search hashtag the sit rep on YouTube.